So our, our next speaker is, uh, our last speaker has spoken at Samuel Griffith uh, Society Conferences. Our next speaker has organised in the past and been the convener. Uh, he's also been the director of the Menzies Research Centre and uh, is currently now at ACU. Everyone, Julian Lisa. Thanks very much. It's wonderful to follow Keith Kendall. He's the only tax lawyer I know who can provoke a riot in the crowd. So it's <laughs> particularly good to follow him. It's great to be on a panel as well with Jim Allen, um, who's lived in every federation in the Commonwealth except for Malaysia and Nigeria, and will no doubt tell us how both those federations work better than ours. And Sinclair, who in his pitch for federalism said, federation is coming together, holding together, which sounds less like a pitch for the Commonwealth and more like the unfulfilled promises of some clubs at RMIT during O week. <laughs> <laughs> a really interesting thing that's come through from both of our uh, first two speakers is the way in which we in Australia are so fiscally unbalanced in a vertical sense. In fact, if you look at the OECD reports, we are the most fiscally unbalanced federation in the world with Mexico running second to us. So in terms of this one, in balance, we mean that the Commonwealth, the central government, collects so much more of the taxes than either of the, uh, the other smaller lists of the government. In my short levels of government, rather, in my short presentation today, I'm just going to talk to you about what if federalism had a Nixon-style enemies list? Who would be on it, and why would they be on it? The first great enemy on the Nixon-style enemies list of federalism is the organisation that Sinclair talked to us about, the Commonwealth Grants Commission. And I agree with everything that Sinclair has said about uh, uh, equalisation being a very bad idea. And I actually think that's uh, the fundamental problem uh, of the debates about federalism. The idea that people should get the same service in Tasmania if its state government wants to turn that state into a national park, uh, as they do in a state with a high-performing economy like Western Australia or New South Wales from time to time, or even Victoria when it's not a complete run. <laughs> um, I think the idea that came through, I mean, the, the irony of the Commonwealth Grants Commission is that in 1933, Western Australia voted to secede from the Federation. And the Privy Council, um, uh, in a decision, stopped Western Australia from seceding. And so as a stop to Western Australia, the Grants Commission was created. And of course, for most of the period since Federation, Western Australia has been a net recipient state and in more recent years, they've been a donor state. Now, I have a great deal of sympathy for the Western Australian government um, in that they've got the GST. And the GST, as John Stone always reminds me, is not a state tax, it's a Commonwealth tax. And it's a Commonwealth tax because the Commonwealth collects the tax, the Commonwealth sets the rate, the Commonwealth sets the terms on which the GST is, is levied. And all Western Australia and any of the other states can do is complain. And that's it, when, when, when things are divvied up badly. And Western Australia, well, I don't think they do do it so well, Sinclair. I think uh, it's very hard when you're the only state who, who's in a bad way. You've got no real pitch to the other states. You lose some money, and we'll get some money. What's in it for all the other states? There, of course, no one's going to agree to that. So I think we have to question the fundamental principle of equalisation. So I think the Grants Commission is a great enemy of federalism because the whole notion of equalisation is against the whole competitive nature behind federalism. The second great enemy of federalism is the High Court. Australia has a great constitution. It was a constitution designed in Australia by Australians for Australian conditions and voted on by Australians. But the constitution that was designed isn't the constitution we've ended up with. And it's largely not the constitution we've ended up with because the High Court has largely favoured the Commonwealth uh, right from the beginning of the... or not right from the beginning, since 1920, since the engineers case. So, Jim Allen was saying to us over lunch, basically, you, know, you go to the High Court, and if you're the Commonwealth, you basically win all the time. Uh, and you know, why do the states bother showing up? Um, there have been a few kind of minor, minor sort of chinks in the Commonwealth armour of recent years, um, uh, around the Pape case and around Williams, but all they've done is create greater bureaucracy for the Commonwealth, not actually given any power back to the states. The biggest problem that the uh, that the um, High Court has created for the states and for federal, federalism generally uh, comes from two recent cases, or one very recent case, the Work Choices case, where it basically adopted the most broad reading of the corporation's power. Um, at the time of the Tasmanian Dams case, I remember people were saying, you know, you may as well get rid of the words external affairs power as a Commonwealth power and write anything. 
uh, and the complement of power to take laws about anything. And similarly, I think the corporation's power has continued in the, the, up to the work choices case has continued on that vein. The second bad case happened many years ago uh, after the war, um, which is the uniform tax cases, where basically the Commonwealth took income tax powers during the war, they didn't want to give it back, the states challenged them uh, over the, uh, over the uh, intervening years and the, and the High Court basically said, um, go jump. Um, so the Commonwealth has increased its legislative power and it's increased its taxing power uh, to the expense of the states. The third organ on federalism's enemies list is the Commonwealth itself. Probably, well, until 1972, the most centralist Prime Minister Australia had ever had was John Gordon. And I had the privilege of having a, a meal once with John Gordon's biographer, Ian Hancock, who's a terrific historian. And I said to him, you know, um, John Gordon was the most centralist Prime Minister Australia had ever had before 1972. And he said to me, look, Julian, show me a Commonwealth Minister and I'll show you a federal, uh, I'll show you a centralist. And that's true. In the main, Commonwealth Ministers want to extend their power and extend their own responsibilities. And uh, they want to do this usually at, at the expense of the states. They want to do this because they see the states as efficient, as, uh, as duplicating things, and, you know, uh, they see problems and they see them as being omnipotent and able to find solutions. Well, so often, as we know, the Commonwealth does a bad job of service delivery. Think of a Tasmanian hospital, think of pink bats, think of school halls, and there's a good case for why the Commonwealth shouldn't be involved in things. The final enemy of federalism on the Nixon-style enemies list is the states themselves. It just amazes me the lack of self-interest in almost all of our state governments uh, of recent years, whatever political strife, that there is very little intellectual effort being put in at a state level to argue in the case against the Commonwealth for more state responsibility and for more state power. And if you are involved in a state government, that's exactly what you should be doing. States should be arguing that we had a constitutional settlement in 1901 and we need to do the best we can to get back to that settlement. Because if we get back to that settlement, we will have a leaner and smaller government that is closer to the people. And they are, I think, fundamentally ideas which should be championed by a conference organised by my friend Tim Andrews from the Australian Taxpayers Alliance and uh, named in, uh, and, and, and my friends who are doing good work with the Australian Libertarian Society uh, around Milton Friedman. Thanks very much.